Today, I'm going to show you how to solve ramp problems using uh, Newton's laws of motion. So let's say we have a ramp. Some angle theta above the horizontal. And there is a block on the ramp. So let's make an assumption that the ramp is stationary, so it doesn't move. If the ramp were not stationary, then as the block slides down the ramp to the right, the ramp would slide to the left. So that's a problem that we could do, but it's a bit more complicated. Um, so we're just going to do the simpler version first. OK, now let's assume this is a statics problem. So in a statics problem, we're going to have no motion to start with. So for our free body diagram, we would have a normal force pointing up. And that's the force of the block or the ramp pushing on the block. We would have a gravitational force pointing down. And now, if in order for the block to not slide down the ramp, there has to be a force in the opposite direction of that motion, which would be the friction force. So for this problem, let's find out what static coefficient of friction you need so that this block of mass m doesn't slide down the ramp. Okay, and we're going to do that using Newton's second law. So we've got our free body diagram, normal friction, gravity point down. Now, conventionally, we use a an xy coordinate system that looks like this. And if we were to do that, we would have to break our friction force into components and our normal force into components. And then our gravity force would just be in the negative y direction. So that's fine, and we could do that. Some of the forces in the y equals my. Some of the forces in x equals max. Now, for a statics problem, these would both go to zero. If the block is in motion down the ramp, however, your y acceleration would not be zero, nor would your x acceleration be zero. And we're going to address the kinematics of the block going down the ramp after we settle this statics problem. So in addition to having to break apart extra forces into components, we would also have an acceleration in the x and y direction to deal with at the end of the problem. So what we like to do instead is rotate our coordinate system such that the x and y directions are like this. So now your normal force points in the positive y direction. Your friction force points in the negative x direction. And now your gravitational force will need to be broken up into components. And again here, for static, your sum of the forces in the x and y direction would both be 0. But when you make this into a 
kinematics problem, now with this rotated coordinate system, now there's no acceleration in the y direction and there's only going to be acceleration in the x direction. So that's going to make doing problems where the block is sliding down the ramp much easier. So this is the convention that we're going to use. Okay. So in order to do that, we need to do some trigonometry. So this was our ramp and block. We already said the normal and the friction are already in the y and negative x directions respectively. So now we only have to break our gravitational force into components. So kind of the reason I drew it like that is now this left side of this triangle is our gravitational force. And we have this angle theta here. Now, when you wanna break a vector into components, the vector needs to be on the hypotenuse of whatever triangle you're trying to make. So this triangle is only going to help us to define this angle phi as 90 degrees minus theta. Okay. So now I have the gravitational force pointing down. If I want the x and y components of that gravitational force, I would need another right triangle. So now with gravitational force as the hypotenuse. Let's test my heart skills. There's your right triangle. So now we've defined this angle phi. So this is the angle between the gravitational force which points straight down and the angle along the ramp phi. So then this angle, the other angle in this right triangle is going to be theta. So now the, it's the x component there and then this is the y component gravitational force. So let me draw draw this figure. So we had gravitational force. And we're breaking that into X and the Y components. Theta down there. So now if you wanted the X component of the gravity vector, you would do sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, so FGX over FG. So now FGX equals FG sine theta. Cosine theta equals op, uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So FGY 
over force of gravity. So now the y component of gravity is fg cosine theta. And then if we replace the force of gravity with m times g, we get that the x and y components are mg sine theta and mg cosine theta, respectively. So just a lot of trig and picture drawing to break those vectors into components. I wanted to show you a different way to think about how to break your vectors into components. So we have, for example, in ramp problems, some block sitting on a ramp. And at the most basic, we have a normal force pointing perpendicular to the ramp and a gravitational force pointing straight down. A lot of times what we like to do is rotate this so that the y and the x coordinates are pointing like that. And if you want to, so now your normal force points along the y direction, but your gravitational force is going to have x and y components. So you can do, you can break your opponents, your components up using trigonometry and drawing a bunch of triangles and angles to convince yourself what the right trigonometric functions to use are, or you can guess and check. And let me show you what I mean by that. So let's guess that the x component, so fgx, is going to be fg cosine theta. Let's just guess that because when we've done other kinematics equation or other kinematics problems, the x component has usually gone with cosine theta. And let's guess that the y component goes with sine theta. Okay. Now the way that we're going to, so that's our guess, so now we have to check. So the way we're going to check that is with a boundary condition. So what if we said theta is equal to zero? So if theta is zero, so here's our ramp with theta. So if theta is zero, we just get a flat surface. So now we have a block sitting on a flat surface and normal pointing up, gravity pointing down, and we wanna figure out if our guess now matches the situation. So we had guessed that the x component met with cosine theta and the y component had gone with sine theta. Now let's plug in this boundary condition. So fg cosine of zero and fg sine of zero. Oops. So from trig, we know that cosine of zero equals one. So this just goes to fg. Sine of zero is zero. So this goes to zero. Now, from what we guessed, this drawing would have no y component for gravity, and gravity would be only pointed in the x direction. And so this is not correct. So our guess was wrong. So the other guess that we made, we could have made, was that the x component 
goes with sine theta and the y component goes with cosine theta. And so now if we check that again at theta equals zero, we would get mg sine of zero, which equals zero, and then mg cosine of zero, cosine of zero is one, so that's mg. So that matches what we expect. So this is just to show you another way, instead of going through the trig and having to draw a bunch of different triangles and finding angles and complementary angles and all that stuff, you can just guess what you think the right components are for those, uh, the right trigonometric function to use for those components and then just check your work using a simple boundary condition like theta equals zero. So now we have the x component of gravity, the y component of gravity. And part of the reason I showed that last step in such uh, detail is that a lot of people assume that the x component always goes with cosine and the y component always goes with sine. And that's not always the case. You have to be careful and actually do your trig to make sure you have the right uh, trigonometric function to use to break your vector and components. Okay, so we've got our x components and y components of the gravitational force. We also had a normal force, which we know is defined as, well, we don't know what it's defined as yet. We're gonna solve for it. And then we have a friction force, which is defined as the static coefficient of friction times the normal force. Okay, and we had this, free body diagram, which now looks like this. Okay, so we've got two, the X and the Y directions. So some of the forces in the X equals MAX. And we remember that this was a statics problem. So some of the forces in the X is zero. Now in the X direction, we have our gravitational force in the positive direction. And then we have our friction force in the negative direction. So our force of friction in the X, or our force of friction has to equal the gravitational force in the x direction. And in the y direction, same deal, the acceleration is zero because it's a statics problem. The forces in the y direction are positive normal force and negative gravitational force in the y direction that has to equal zero. So our normal force has to equal our gravitational force in the y direction. Now we're gonna treat the y direction first because there's only one unknown in the y direction and that's the normal force. Whereas in the x direction, because of how friction is defined, we have the unknown of the static coefficient of friction and the normal force. So treating the y direction first, we had normal minus gravity y equals zero. So force of normal equals gravity y component, which we use trig to find was mg cosine theta. 
Okay. So now we plug that into the x direction, which was friction. negative friction plus gravity in x. So we get force of friction equals x. Force of friction is mu times the normal force equals mg sine theta. And now we put this normal and for that mu mg cosine theta equals mg sine theta. Now you see the masses and the gravity on both sides cancel, and mu equals sine theta over cosine theta, which equals tan theta. So if you have a block sitting on a ramp and it's not moving, then the coefficient of friction between the block and the ramp is at least equal to tangent of the angle of that ramp. So obviously, if the static coefficient of friction is greater than that, the block is still not going to move. Uh, but as you decrease that coefficient of friction uh, to a value below tangent of theta, then the block is not moving. So that was how to determine the static coefficient of friction. So setting up the ramp problem as a statics problem. Uh, but now what if we assume that the static coefficient of friction is less than tangent of theta. So now what if the block does start moving? Now, the way we set up our problem, y x like that. And in the y direction, there will not be any acceleration, but in the x direction, there will be an acceleration. So let's figure out what that acceleration is. So what is it? Okay. So we'll set up the problem the same way. Some of the forces in the y is zero. So our normal force minus the y component of gravity is zero. So normal equals gravity in the y. So normal is mg cosine theta. And then we can apply that to the x direction. So positive gravity, negative friction. And now our friction is, since this is moving, our mu is less than our tan theta. So now mu is going to be mu sub k for kinetic instead of mu sub s for static. And this doesn't go to zero now because the block is sliding down there. So this is mg sine theta minus mu k times normal force equals 
and AX. Let's plug the normal force in again. MG sine theta minus mu k mg cosine theta max. So now solving for the acceleration in the x direction, you see all the m's cancel and the acceleration in x. So the acceleration down the ramp is g can be factored out and then you get sine theta minus mu k cosine theta. Okay. So now the whole point of using Newton's second law to find the acceleration is now we can plug that acceleration into the kinematics equations to find out, for example, how long in time it takes to go down the ramp. We can figure out the velocity at the bottom of the ramp. We can do all of those things. Uh, so for this example, let's say, so we want to keep this acceleration. Ax equals g times cosine theta minus sine. sine theta minus mu k cosine theta. The, and let's say that our, so we were only given a theta initially, uh, but let's say we're also given a height h for the ramp. Oh, and the height h will just be the height that the center of mass of the block started at, and H. And let's use this information, the height, the angle, and the acceleration to find the time that it takes to get to the bottom of the ring. Fine. Okay. So if we remember our kinematic equations, Now we want time, so we know acceleration, we want to know time. So we have a height which we can use to get a delta x that we're going to need the, the angle theta to do. So with these variables, I'm going to pick this kinematic equation to solve for time. Okay, so first let's do some trig to figure out what our delta x is going to be. So delta x is the hypotenuse of this triangle, and we have opposite over hypotenuse, so sine theta equals h over delta x, so delta x equals h over sine theta and that's what we're going to use. So we've selected this kinematic equation the initial velocity was zero 
solving this for time, t squared So we would divide the multiply both sides by two, divide by a, and now t, we take the square root of that. We just solved for delta x, which was two times h over sine theta. And then our acceleration, we had solved for g sine theta minus mu k cosine theta. So let's just take some reasonable values for h half a meter, so one and a half feet theta. 30 degrees and let's say the kinematic coefficient of friction is 0 0.01. So if you plug all those in, square root of two times 0 0.5 sine of 30 degrees over 9.8 sine of 30 minus 0 0.01 cosine of 30 so if you plug all that in so plugging that into your calculator you would get a time of 0 0.0 0 0.64 seconds So we started off with a statics problem to figure out what coefficient of friction would be needed for a block to stay stationary on a ramp. Then we assumed that the coefficient of friction was actually less than that uh, static coefficient of friction that we found so that the block would be in motion. Uh, we found what acceleration that block would have. And then using the kinematics equations, we figured out how long it would take that block to slide down the ramp. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Peep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.